And so we are now going to start this st session about remote access to Frogan sites and about dynamic as access to Frogan sites. So I'm Philippe Collin. I'm in charge of innovation at OP3FT. So what haunts me as soon as I get up is to help people on the internet ecosystem and help them use Frogan's technology in order to innovate. And since the launch or the revealing of the uh, Frogan's technology, we're talking about sites and sites available on the internet. So a few years back when we came with FSDL 3.0, and Frogan's player, we were not in a position to show you the internet part of the Frogan's technology. So these are the very first steps in this new version of the Frogan's player, which is available as of today. And you can now have access to Frogan's sites, which are remote, connected to the internet and hosted on remote servers. That's the first step towards the resolution of uh, Frogan's addresses, i.e. secured and reliable connection to these addresses to access FSDL files. So this is not yet the final solution, but that's the first step, and we are going to demonstrate the very first connection to Frogan's site, fr which are hosted on servers, and we will access these sites from the Frogan's player. So how can we achieve that? Well, you know that in Frogan's technology we talk about FSDL quite a lot. This is the language used for the description of the Frogan's site. FS is Frogan Slides, but there are other languages such as UCSR, that's the ability of using a network in order to access a resource which is going to display FSDL or images on a remote device. So today we're launching or introducing UCSR. UCSR. That, that's a bit laborious, but this is what we wanted to show you today. This version today is not an address. We use a configuration file, so we are going to specify where we have the Frogan's player. We are going to specify where the sites are, the sites that we're then going to navigate through together. So this is not the final version, but it allows us to share a resource to make it available on a server and allow different people to, hack, to actually access the resource. It's also a way to host a Frogan site on a server and then evolve it, like on a data source, like an XML stream, RSS um, a flow, etc. So by having this on the server, on the server, we can change the FSDL code using very well-known techniques, the same as those used to create dynamic websites. So we're not inventing anything here. What we are actually inventing is the ability to use the network the way it is today, but also You'll see, in, it's in the structure, it's in the way we display the sites so that we can anticipate for the future and say, OK, today we'll use HTTP, but in the future we'll be using other protocols which are not very famous at the moment or which have not yet been invented. So the Frogan's, I mean, the idea underlying the Frogan's technology is that it can be published on the internet, but also on any other kind of network. And this is what we are about to see together. Is it possible to have a demo? Yeah. So, thank you for showing patience. We are uh, sorry it took us a few minutes to get started. We had a few problems with the new release of the Frogan's player. So, on the screen, just to say that get.frogans, the website, was updated. And 
you go to the download area to have access to the 0.5.1 version. This is an alpha version for developers. It's been made available online as of today, two days ahead of time, uh, with regards to other releases, which are usually done on Thursday, uh, on Thursdays, hence our delay today. Uh, Alexi, you said 051. What does that mean? Well, the different alpha versions of the Frogans player are now, since we supported the Linux platform two weeks ago, we now have a second digit increment every week. So this is 0 0.5.1, and if there were any corrective release, you'd be in 0 0.52, and next week we'll be in 0 0.6. Okay, so for people who participated uh, for the Frogans Award and who could not make use of this uh, very last uh, version, and we've frozen at 0.3.1, which dates back to the end of June. So, of course, you were all on the same footing to participate in, in the competition. And of course, the sites that were created with, the, with this uh, version can also run on this new version that we're releasing today. So uh, we are going to use the uh, 5.1, which is the first one that can be accessed from uh, the internet. Voilà, j'avais juste un, une interrogation sur cette machine. Alors, revenons sur, sur Get.Forgans. Voilà. Voilà, donc je reviens sur Get.Forgans et je me retrouve donc devant... Alors, je suis sur un ordinateur... So, I'm on this computer that's running the uh, Linux operating system and I am downloading the latest version of the Frogans player. So, I've done it. Trust me. I downloaded this version here in my directory and I decompressed it to make sure it works and it does. So, I'm going to launch it now. So, you are familiar with the Frogans player, this small... We still don't have a name. I mean, we still call it a, a dot, but, uh, you know, it's the yellow dot. But this might be a new Frogans competition. This, which is a symbol of the presence of Frogans player on your desktop, well, at the moment we call it the yellow dot, but we'd like to find a nicer name. So please help us offer any kind of name. Okay, so after I entered Frogan's plan, I enter hello test star Frogan's plan, and everything goes fine. You see the demo Frogan site, and it's just to make sure that the plan works fine, and of course, I can navigate from one page to the next. This demo Frogan's site. Well, it's being downloaded. So this computer is a bit slow, I'm afraid. But anyway, so this demo is in the test directory. And here, in Hello World. So nothing's changed. But what you can see here is that next you have a file which is called config configuration for texting dot xml and that's a new file which contains data that we're going to take a look at right now so in order to clarify one instance of configuration for testing at the same level as Frogan's player in, in the same file. So it's a very simple XML file, so that's for developers obviously. It's not for the public at large. Because here we're testing Frogan's sites. 
So what do we see? Well, all we see is that here you have test Frogan's site, which des describes the test Hello World address. And the first thing we see is that you have an XML event here, a Frogan site root directory. And as you know, a Frogan site is hosted in a, uh, a directory and all the slides are included in it and what the configuration says is that there is this UCSR pass and it gives us information. UCSR pass is the first public demonstration of this UCSR uh, feature that you were telling us uh, about before and which shows us on a cross-network basis where the Frogan's site is located and we see here that the uh, root it's local network so it's a bit disappointing because it's still uh, local but it's a specific Frogan's network because it allows downloading not through a network but using a local solution so the UCSR local network is going to be configured as follows. I'm using the Linux platform. So if you download for Windows or Mac OS OX 10, you'll see that the platform is going to be different. You'll have uh, Windows for Windows and Mac OS OX for Mac OX 10. And then you have the folder in which you have the uh, Frogan's the site in question, so the Hello World one. So if you remember, okay, in the past, Frogan's Player for Developers only interpreted the location according to the directory in which you had your data. For, for instance, if it was Hello World, it was necessarily test star Hello World. Now this is not the case anymore. You can. Uh, uh, figure out other names. So we're getting closer to what will the uh, Frogan's addresses be in production. The folders you can place, oh, the directories can be uh, about where Frogan's player is. This is why you have dot slash. Or it can also be an absolute location in the filing system. So, for instance, for a Linux system, it can, it can be in your home or anywhere else. Likewise for Windows or for Mac. So in red here, it shows the setting. And for this format of file, we didn't create any specification it is um, self-documented and it's extremely simple. So now that we know where the directory is, uh, we need to look at something which was implicit in the previous version, that is, what's the nature of your frog Frogan site, what's the version of the FSDL documents that you created. So. This is version 3, but uh, when we have version 4 or version 5, you'll show it here. And likewise, for production, you need to show the FSDL version that you're using. And that's important because the Frogan side is folders and files, but also navigation. And there are ways to remain connected and uh, save your sessions and this is going to depend on the type of FSDL connections that you are creating. The other thing in encoding is the encoding of the characters that you are writing and this is UTF-8. In the previous version UTF-8 was by default and you couldn't use files coded in UTF-16, for instance. And you know that the Frogan site opens on a page, on a home page. And it's indicated here. 
So we have the same architecture as the architecture that we had uh, showed you, shown you before, but uh, now you can change the name home.fsdl. It can have another name, and all this will be available online, very dynamic, and will change the FSDL extension, and it can be saved in a sub-directory. You have total freedom. So we've done exactly the same as before, but it's more open. Uh, the next question is, how do we place this on the network? Right, and so local means the files of my site will be on my uh, computer, but you also want to access remote files. So do I need to know a protocol or do I need to use a particular uh, protocol to, to do that, to use uh, 05.1? No, not at all. It is hosted in the directory right next to Frogon's player. Here it is, as you can see. So all you do is, it, it, sorry, it comes with Frogan's player and it's going to be updated uh, progressively. Alors donc, la deuxième possibilité qui so the second option is to host FSDL slides and uh, Frogan's site content and their images on uh, remote servers. So the only thing you are going to change is the the location of the uh, Frogan's site directory. Nothing else changes. So to do so, all you need to do is replace the UC uh, R pass by uh, another UC uh, R pass which indicates an internet network. So let's do it together. So I'm going to create another address, uh, a test address. So as I said, we're going to do exactly what we typically do. You're a developer, you cut and paste. Je m'approche. Voilà. Donc je récupère simplement cette structure là. You cut and paste and I'm going to create a second site. Okay, so I just pasted. So let's call it uh, LO Word World 2. Récupérer ce petit morceau de and um, I'm going to replace my local directory. So, if you have technical information, you recognize that we have an IP, you have a DNS, the TCP protocol, and the HTTP protocol. Uh, so, the UCSR network uses all four protocols and uh, they're all to, 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 to operate it's it, it is its only function we're going to use this series of protocols to recover or pick up files and uh, so UCSR uses more than HTTP DNS and so on it also provides an environment if you consider HTTP is not secure enough for example if in addition to HTTP, you or, or, or if, if in between HTTP and TCP would like to use TLS for greater uh, security uh, or to protect your uh, information uh, confidentiality, well, at OP3FT we have uh, new options uh, for a better protection. So if you're a Frogan's publisher, you can choose so, no more URLs, HTTP, HTTPS, is it protected? Depend it depends on the certificate and who uh, issues the certificate. Does it uh, contain a lot of encryption or not? Here we have a Frogan's network, which is uh, provides the security. So, 
Going uh, a bit further, uh, what you could probably do between these two chains of characters, you add TLS, and this would give you give you a fully protected network, uh, and uh, the specs are absolutely available. You know exactly what level of security you will benefit from. So, so we, what's the protocol sets? Well, this one is very basic uh, on internet. It's TCP. And we put a bit of HTTP, HTTP uh, for uh, file recovery. So this UCSR network can be used to host on, um, on a traditional server um, a Frogan's site. Now, what is interesting is once you've uh, completed this, once we've uh, finished this, you will see that we, we don't we haven't touched the Frogan's site itself. And this is uh, what we've always said since the very since the early days. We want to be independent from network protocols. And if you are developing Frogan's sites, uh, if you're publishing, well, you can do that without having to worry about the other networks, without having to be concerned about them. Um, this is all you need, all the rest is of course fully compatible from one network to another so this is the UCSR network uniform content server request that's what UCSR stands for let me just add to that that the specs of UCSR have not been published yet it's still being developed as we're speaking it will be published on frogans.org and if you are a subscriber to the mailing list, um, uh, or if you haven't already subscribed, uh, make sure that you do so to stay informed, to be informed uh, about uh, the availability of uh, this information. So the next question is, what server? On what server am I going to be hosted? So I'm going to you may have noticed this window here this is an FTP client right so this again this is very basic we're connecting to an HTTP server which is hosted somewhere I don't know where it is maybe in Paris and I'm going to place um, a Frogan's site on this server so the name of the server is here as you can see we're connected so I'm going to put the domain name of the server which is right here p7526.test.lab p 7526 ftorg port is 80 that's uh, standard to connect uh, and uh, work in http and let's take a look at the server so let me put this uh, full screen so we have a uh, directory here in the directory is called hosting and we have a lot of different things maybe we'll get some surprises there uh, let me see I could create a directory if it lets me do it uh, okay let's give it a name let's call it test.ftc6 Okay, and as you can see, it is empty, so there's nothing on the server right now. But I'm going to uh, have to provide the information about the directory. Here it is, uh, one slash will be enough. So here we have the directory. So I've now indicated where the Frogans site is located. With Hello World 2. Uh, so once we put Frogan sites online, uh, once the uh, FCR is opened to the general public, to internet users, there will be nothing else to do. It's uh, so once again, as you as you just saw, it is very straightforward. We need a server, a directory, um, a domain. So, Alexi, 
for uh, our uh, the people who are host hosting here are you saying you don't need to set up any type of uh, technology in your service it's really more a question of configuration so it will be configured the con configuration will be in the address itself so if you if you have a new business line uh, and the, this, this would be a, a, really a new business opportunity so in So we should be right there, right in it. So this is what I downloaded, and once again, here is the Hello World directory. So I'm now going to transfer uh, what I got on to the server. So we've just transferred the content of the Frogons site onto the server. So we have the two files, home and slide two, and the images here again. This is the, the globe, remember? Um, so everything's been transferred. So there we are, keeping fingers crossed. So test star hello world two world with an l uh, let me just make sure that i didn't get it right to start with in the configuration so now i click ok and here it is we now have a frogan's site Mais cela dit, c'est quand même, ça faisait longtemps que j'en avais pas eu un en ligne. <laughs> Je suis content. Well, I'm quite happy. Um, this one's online. So, now let's make sure that this is really what we got. So, let me double check. Could we maybe change some text or play with the shapes? Absolutely. I, that, that was my next suggestion. Let's make sure that this is really what's online by playing with it. Um, and by changing some of its content. And then let's do something else. Um, on the server, the server where the program site is located, what we, let me see if we can navigate. Yes, we can navigate. On the server, we've installed a script PHP, which is very well known by web developers. So, and, and we're going to make a dynamic Frogans site, which means this, that this time the server is going to execute and transform the content. Uh, you'll see that in terms of production of content, dynamic content, it's very easy, which is very different from before. So far, we were limited to static files. Now things are becoming dynamic. So let's, uh, let's give it a try. First of all, let me open the file, so the test file, and let me create another directory. So here we are. So just to make it clear for everyone, I'm going to create a directory that I'm going to call test ftc6. Okay, and in that directory, I'm going to place I'm going to copy once again the three uh, files. Copy. Copy. And paste into folder. So let's not click on home.fsdl to edit the file. So if you've uh, created Frogan's site before, there is nothing really new here. 
as you can see once again this is an FD, uh, an FDSL uh, FSDL site what we have here is that we have these layers these are um, these layers allow you to create your content for example as you can see we have a site here with different layers one layer would be the background you can see that uh, there's a little bit of a little bit of depth then we have another layer which is hello world do you have a vignette and there are two ways of seeing this site. By resizing it, you can see that you, you have uh, the rendering uh, changes. That way you can read information no matter how big it is, how, how, how it is displayed. And then we have the, uh, the globe, which is another layer. So with the, the simple description of the buttons, you can get rollover effects. Again, these are very simple. Simply by with the, using the descriptions without any codes, you can get these effects. So we're editing this particular file, and what I suggest is, for example, to take this one. Let me take this one. So this is the wording. Um, so now, you, because it is in line, you're going to, online. You have, you're going to have to reload it. So you've done it locally, but now you need to put it back on the server, of course, to update the site. So going to downloads. So. I have to update and now we have the test FTC 6 this is where this uh, change is so you, as, you, as you can see I've just changed the file it is 446 um, and now let's publish it online do I want to replace it yes and refresh and there we go. It, it, it is now the hello world is now replaced by salut. So, once you've done this, you may say, well, okay, fine. I'm, uh, this is not very dynamic. It's quite a... It's, it, and it's... Um, what we can do now is to make the Frogon site dynamic. So to do this, Instead of calling it frogans.fsdl, we're going to call it home.php. And let's transform it. And instead of having salut, I'm going to ask the PHP, uh, the server, to create a dynamic chain of characters. So, I'm not a, a, a PHP champion, but I have a few people in the room who could help me. Michelle, for example. And... I'm going to display this time. So in PHP, all I need to do, I added the PHP tag and I'm going to add echo. Let's see if it, if it is going to work. So I'm adding date, column, dot, date, and then you add LDFY. And normally, the date should be displayed right there. I think it is a semicolon, actually. Okay, so back to the uh, transfer software. And let me take it here. So as you can see, I now have a home.fsdl and homeday.php. So let me refresh. And 
Quand je le recharge, je suis sur le fichier home.fsdl. We're still on the home.fsdl, so there is no reason why it should switch to home.php. So I need to go back to the previous part. Donc je vais en fait revenir à la configuration. Let me come back to the to the uh, earlier configuration, right there. Instead of home.fsdl, I'm telling it now to go to .php. C'est tout. Alors quand je rouvre un site Frogan, nothing more. So now when I open the Frogan's site, the configuration is going to be red again, and normally. Faire test étoile Hello World 2. Test star Hello World 2, and here is the date, at least the beginning of the date. Donc ça, ça signifie que le, le site, le site Frogans, donc le, le, le So, this shows that home.php has uh, operated an executable, it added the date. Now we can, of course, change the font. I'll make it a 10, for example. And you can see that there has been an execution on the server. And if you go to the second site, or the second slide, rather, of the site, we're going to go to slide 2.fsdl. And remember, in slide 2, we're going we're back to home.fsdl, so we need to edit this as well. We need to edit the second slide to make sure that when we go to the second slide, here you can see how this works. Again, it's home.fsdl, so we're going to change it. We're going to say home.php. Now, Alexi, I have a question. Um, for people who are not familiar with fsdl, um, you can go to the OP3, uh, OP3P ch uh, channel um, on YouTube, you will find tutorials on Frogans technology and learn how to make sites like this one. It, it contains a lot of very valuable and uh, helpful information. So if, you, if, you find, if you're finding this a bit complicated, um, you can go online uh, again and uh, use the OP3FT channel on YouTube. Okay, back to you. So, in the meantime, I've just uh, updated the two files we uh, I've changed. I'm actually going to remove the home.fsdl file. So, I've actually removed it. I'm, I've just kept the home.php. So now, when you go to the slide, and you come back to the home page, there you go. Now we have the full date. Now, if you could put the time, it would be even better. Because with the, the, the time, you could actually see uh, the hour and the seconds change live. If anyone could give me that information on how to do that, I could do it right now. So, H, column I, S. So we're, we're actually changing the date into time. Je remets la la page PHP. So back to the PHP page. Reload. And now we have the time. And so let's refresh once again and see if it changes. It does change. That means it's working. Merci, oui. Félicitations. Okay, well, congratulations. Um, as, and as you can see, the clock is ticking. We have to go a little faster. Well, I think I've. Uh, this is pretty much what I can do in terms of PHP. Um, once again, this is a very basic manipulation. Um, 
if you're uh, a developer, a web app developer, um, you could make your sites dynamic quite easily. All you would need to do is to use FSDL like uh, Une interface de representation. a representation interface. And you get all the existing infrastructure, uh, database queries, uh, web services, and so on. So you, we have everything. Everything you can do in a server you can use to generate dynamic Frogans sites. So a wide range of options uh, is available. And with this new option in Frogans Player, you will be able to uh, see a lot more uh, happening. As you can see with reloading, uh, you can also aggregate uh, data, uh, dynamic flows. So, as you can see, the graphic design is making uh, it's a lot more dynamic. And then this week, uh, actually today, right now, live, you can, you can see that we can also add uh, dynamic transactions. The third one will be the address in order to make uh, to make it possible for everyone to access these sites. Right now it's for developers who are interested in developing their own site. And uh, prototypes uh, to get ready before these uh, become or go public. Do we have any questions in the audience on this new release of uh, Fragrance uh, developer for remote servers. No questions? Okay. Well, I received an email this morning. I know that one of our partners in the internet uh, ecosystem is trying to develop a site which is using this new feature, this new option with the 0 0.5.1 version or release and hopefully we can show it uh, a bit later when we connect to the server. Right, I think they were very much looking forward to getting the, the new uh, Frogans Player release. So we are a bit behind schedule. I suggest we now move on to the next session and uh, we will take a break, a, a shorter break um, after this session, okay, to catch up with the, uh, the time. Um, once again, I just need two, three minutes. Um, I need to set up uh, my computer and I need to switch environments. Okay, we can do that um, pretty quickly, so let's resume in approximately five minutes.